Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was staggered to hear that a member of the Liberal Party was banned for 10 years. I mean, as Robbo said a few moments ago, you get less for murder. <laughs> now, it was with uh, some surprise that I got an invitation from Walter to come and join you good people here today. And the reality is, uh, as a Victorian, um, very rarely is the opportunity given to us to come north and to advise you on anything. <laughs> so, it was incumbent upon me, uh, receiving such a generous offer, to fly up at six in the morning to join you here on a Saturday. And I do only get two days off to come. But thank you so much, Walter, for the invitation. And thank you so much for leading the charge behind the scenes and all that you're doing in going for the right direction for this division. Um, it is incumbent upon the New South Wales division to lead the National Liberal Party. Um, traditionally, this has been the seat of power for the Liberal Party. And with a failing New South Wales, we will have a failing Liberal Party and in turn a failing coalition. So today, I've got uh, a couple of things I want to speak to you about. And I want to speak to you about uh, our experience in Victoria with plebiscite reform. And I want to speak to you about what the cost of not reforming in New South Wales will be, not only for your division, but more importantly for the Liberal Party across this great nation. Ladies and gentlemen, political parties in the 21st century haven't been going so well. Um, and as the Labor Party found out last year, um, the best way to change political parties is to allow people to have their voice and their vote. The Labor Party in 2015 had a plebiscite on the leadership of their party, not just the pre-selection of members. While I'm not advocating for that today, it's interesting if you analyse what they have done and in turn what you haven't done here. In the state of Victoria in the mid-2000s, we had an argument, a debate, uh, around how we were going to try and democratise our division of the party. And our decision was that we would give one voter, one member, one vote. It's a fairly simple concept. And further that, we democratised the manner in which we would elect our state executive, and which we call the administrative committee, and all of our internal party positions. Now, over the ensuing eight years, we have had a, 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 a flourishing of the capacity of the Victorian division, so much so that at the last federal election, we were the only state not only to hold all the seats which we had gone into 2013 with, but we picked one up. And it was because of the capacity of being able to build membership organically and, of course, recruit people to our party and to our cause who represented the values broadly of the community, but most importantly, were hungry enough to put the hard yards in and to represent electorates, where typically the Liberal Party hasn't always been good at representing. And in New South Wales, I was shocked when I looked at the results after the 2016 election in, in July. You lost seven seats. I don't know how this division can continue to argue for the current process when you had an electoral wipeout in this state. Seven seats. So our experience in Victoria has been quite simple. When, you, when, when plebiscite reform came in, when organisational reform came in, there were many benefits. And uh, some of those which we have experienced is obviously a growth in membership. And for the first time in 50 years, in 50 years, the Victorian Division's membership is consistently growing. We started off the start of the year before last with about 10,000 members. Today we're at 12,500. An organic growth that has been because good-minded citizens have decided to get involved in a party that allows them their vote and them their values. And it's in that capacity that the Liberal Party is best placed to serve. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is a no-brainer in this state. Um, and as, as head of membership and, and, and training on the uh, state executive, um, I can say uh, to you guys that you will see an automatic result in the changes that happen within your electorate conferences and also, importantly, the types of people who turn up for pre-selection. One of the great problems with the modern Liberal Party, um, and I think I can say this here without being expelled, um, <laughs> I think I can say this here without being expelled, but one of the great problems of the modern Liberal Party is that we have been taken over by career bureaucrats. Yeah. We have been taken over, we have been taken over by people who work in, whether it be lobbyists, whether it be political staffers, um, whether it be people who have worked in government for the entirety of their careers. So how do we, as a small government, um, as, as the independent person's party, articulate our point if all we're sending to Canberra and, 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 a, and a Spring Street and Melbourne to your state parliament as well 
are people who have worked for the majority of their career in the offices of members or in advising or trying to push a position to members as a lobbyist, um, as, as, as a quasi think tank. Um, how do we represent Main Street when we are sending bureaucrats by the bucket load to Canberra and your state parliamentary party? So to, so to cap off on what benefits are available to you, what are the benefits the Victorian Division had from dem democratic reform? We had an increase in members. We had an increase in campaign volunteers. We had an increase in organic fundraising. We had an increase in the networks and the community organisations that would then lend their name, their brand and obviously their support as well to the Liberal Party. Um, and most importantly of all of this, we had an increase of capable and talented people filling the ranks of the Victorian Division of the Liberal Party. And ladies and gentlemen, there can be no doubt that the people who have been sent to Canberra in the last crop are some of the best and brightest in the country, and they were all elected under the plebiscite model. <laughs> what I find particularly upsetting about this debate from a Victorian's perspective is the intellectual and political dishonesty um, of the No campaign. Yep. Yeah. And to me it seems as though uh, there's straw man argument after straw man argument <laughs> and there's uh, a lot of interest which is already vested in the status quo. Um, to keep a party small, to keep a party of government small, I think is irresponsible. Um, the reasons for, for doing so I think have been articulated already by those who have spoken today and don't need to be covered again by myself. But what I will tell you is what we see the New South Division, Wales Division is and what the cost of if you continue on with the status quo down here will be. And the first of those costs is the very real cost of the capacity of the coalition to hold government. With a seven seat electoral wipeout in the state of New South Wales at the last election, we almost lost the election <laughs> to a Labor Party which is considerably compromised and to a leader who is not fit for the job. But, fortunately, in Victoria, we managed to hold the line for you. We won a seat. Now, it's been a long time in Victoria since we've done that. And comparatively, we had our best result. Sorry, Tony, but it was the best for us. <laughs> the second issue is New South Wales leadership status. It's only the best and brightest that can carry your state. You had the best and brightest and you had a generation of great Liberals. Prime Ministers, uh, ideological leaders, um, people who genuinely represented aspirational Australia, the working middle class. I don't know. I don't know if you have that today. I don't know. I don't know. We lost it when we Tony. I'll leave that comment where it came from. The third is the Dastiari effect. And the Dastiari effect is something which is explicitly legal, but it leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And what has happened in, to, in, in our democracy, in the loss of faith, faith in our democracy, is that the actions of people who probably started and probably are well-intentioned, and I'd like to hope so, come across to people in the general public, the millions of Australians who put one next to the Liberal Party every time they turn up to a ballot box. And ladies and gentlemen, they are the people we're representing. Not us, not the MPs. It's the millions of Australians who turn up and put one next to the Liberal Party. The small business people. It's the independent, un ununionised workforce. It's the families. It's the faith communities. Um, it's new Australian citizens. It's all the people who are aspirational in intention. They're the ones who are being let down by our party's failure to represent them. Forget about the great grand old Liberal Party. Remember the people who actually vote for us. Year in, year out. They're the ones who are being let down. And the Dastyari effect it's hardest with those because it is it is the behavior of individuals being involved in politics and government in what is felt to be an improper way maybe it is explicitly not illegal but the manner in which they are involved has lost Australia's confidence in democracy and ladies and gentlemen for the first time in a hundred years in this country there was a survey taken in 2014 where up to 40 percent of Australians who are asked within my age demographic, so that they did not believe democracy was a superior form of government. Not 2014, the ANU study. It's very, very scary stuff. 
Yeah. So we have actually managed to undermine our capacity and our faith in democracy, so much so that as a political party and as a country, we no longer believe in the bedrock of the system that let our ideas flourish and for this nation, for Western, Westminster nations to be a power and a force for, the global, for, for global leadership. And it's not just in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, today 0.5% of Australians are members of political parties, 0.5%. 50 years ago, in 1966, 5.8% were members of political parties and a further 25% of the population were members of a trade union. Today that's down to 7%. Australians have never been less involved in their democracy. And if we want to turn that around, democratisation within parties of government is the best way we can achieve that. The, the, the fourth and final reason why the cost of failure cannot be accepted is it's the failure of the Liberal Party's mandate. It's the failure of the Liberal Party's mandate to not represent the hundreds of thousands, the millions of Australians who go into that ballot box and put one next to us and to say, democracy's all right for you, Muggs, but when it comes to political involvement for a party that has always been a machine, a vehicle for the forgotten people, that you cannot have that democracy within that party. It is a failure of the Liberal Party's mandate. Those hundreds of thousands of Australians who rely upon us to get into government and to do the right thing by the country, by our small businesses, by our families, by our schools, by our faith, we're letting them down every day this goes on. Because if a major party of government is not democratic and seeks election in a democratic system, there is a gross hypocrisy. I, I want to finish on, on one quick point, and I was at a dinner last night uh, down, down in uh, Melbourne. It was for the Melbourne University Liberal Club, a great Liberal Club, and I met a young man there. And he, the young man I found out lived in Sydney. And I had a chat to him, and he said, oh, I'm a member of the Liberal Party up there. I said, fantastic. And so I said, I'm going up to this conference. And he said, oh, you're going to the conference? And I said, yeah, I'm going to the conference. And he said to me, he said, oh, oh you wouldn't want to tell too many people that. And I said, R why? Why, mate? And he said, well, you know, he gave me these arguments. He said that if the Liberal Party democratised, um, we'd be overrun with, with lunatics who would change the very nature of the Liberal Party. I thought, well, in Victoria that hasn't happened, but we'd be delighted to be overrun with new members. <laughs> Number two, he said to me, he said to me uh, you know, branch delegates they're more capable of making the right decision. And I thought to myself, well, well there's, there's, there's 12,500 branch dele delegates in the state of Victoria who made some absolutely outstanding decisions yeah. at the pre-selections leading up to the next last federal election. And we sent some absolutely outstanding and talented people to Canberra, some of whom I think have outpaced some other states. <laughs> And then it was the final argument, which is the weakest argument and the only argument people who are on the wrong side of history take. And that argument is, it's not the right time. <laughs> well, well, it's quite clearly defined today. Um, you've got two or three years until a state election. You've got two or three years until a federal election. Your party membership has gone through the floor. I think they've had to dig a hole for the chart to go down. <laughs> and now is the time. Today is the day. Your state council is the state council. You have some outstanding support from prime ministers past and present, from premiers past and present. Um, you have the support of a very, very good group of liberals, and I think you are overwhelmingly in the right column. Um, well done. Congratulations for having the brave, bravery to put on today, particularly you, Walter. Um, mate, if you're still a member tomorrow, I'll be amazed. <laughs> um, and thank you. Thank you for turning up and actually caring about this democracy and doing the right thing by the Liberal Party. We're counting on you. Victoria's counting on you. Australia's counting on you. So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, don't let me down. Don't let Stephanie and I down. We got up here at six in the morning. We don't want to come back next year for this. We want it done this year. And we want to come back here in happier times when you have a thriving division and you have tens of thousands of members of the Liberal Party in this state once had. And when we were proud of our values, proud of our views, and we could articulate our position in the public debate and win 
elections. Ladies and gentlemen, the future's all yours. Please do the right thing and encourage everyone around you to do the same. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.